Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are here to set up our bi-weekly budget for the second half of August. So in front of me I've got my stickers from Sarah Marie Stickers on Etsy. I always have everything that I personally like to use for budgeting and planning and just some random miscellaneous things always linked in the description box down below so definitely check that out. And then of course I'm using my Erin Condren monthly planner. I'm gonna zoom you guys. Oop, not that way, that way. <laughs> um, so you can see the whole thing a little bit better. But yeah, so this is the first half of the month. Tomorrow, you guys should be seeing our results video, kind of showing how everything, um, how everything turned out <laughs> for the first half and everything. Um, I personally, the reason why, because I get questions about this a lot, the reason why I personally like to split the budget up into smaller pieces is to kind of like track our progress a little bit more closely because for me personally like checking in with my budget halfway through and seeing like oh shoot we are like super over on things or like this is what it's looking like or oh we're we're doing really good like that's super motivating to me we were doing paycheck to paycheck to paycheck which was a lot because we're paid weekly between my husband and I and that was just it was just too much to be honest it was super tedious so now the way that we're doing it is we our budget starts on the first of the month it ends on the last day of the month we split it up into two pieces the first through the 15th the 16th through the last day of the month and then this way we're able to like really see like what went into savings because here's the thing this is all mental you know it's all a mental thing so for me if I like wait until the end of the month to contribute towards a goal like putting money into savings or something like that I am much more likely to mess that up in some way, you know? So this is really for extra accountability for me. My husband does not spend money ever. I am the spender <laughs> of the two of us. So for me, just kind of having this broken down into like, just like a honed in view of the month is very, very helpful. Plus, again, a mental thing, if I go into the month being like, I have $700 for groceries. I'm much more likely to overspend in the first part of the month, leaving me like not in a great position towards the end of the month where we're struggling like to stick to budget and we're more likely to go over. So that is why I do what I do. It's just what works for us. I know it doesn't work for everybody. I wish I could be one that kept it a little bit more simple and had like my monthly budget and everything like that. I admire the people that are able to do that. But for me personally, just knowing how impulsive I can be with spending and all that kind of stuff, like I have to keep it like really, really dialed in. And so this is my way of doing that. So anyways, just wanted to kind of throw that out there because I do get questions about that pretty often. So. Let's go ahead and get started. I did no prep work <laughs> for this video. Normally I have like my rough draft budget set aside. I don't have it, but I do have my phone and my phone has our every dollar budget in it and I can kind of figure it out from there. And that by the way is what I use every dollar for. I almost use it for rough draft budgets. I don't like to use it solely for budgeting because um, for me like having things on pen and paper it helps again hold me more accountable because this is not an erasable pen this isn't something like if i wanted to change something i would have to white it out which would be really obvious and i hate whiting things out or i'd have to like scratch it out and that just doesn't work so for me this feels like just more of a commitment whereas electronic and electronically <laughs> it's really easy to just manipulate numbers and things like that so i kind of play around in every dollar um, to get like projections and things like that kind of get an idea like i have all of our monthly budgets like laid out until the end of the year so i can kind of get an idea of like this is where we're going to be come january and that sort of thing like if we stick to budget um but i really use my pen and paper because it just feels it's just that like whole pen to paper to brain connection. It just sticks better. I don't, I don't know. So anyways, um, let's see. So Kelsey, I just got your text. Whoop. <laughs> I won't share your news cause I don't know if you want me to share it <laughs> on my channel, but I'm excited for you. So anyways, um, I will text you back in a second. So let's put down our income. And then I always forget to like turn my phone off, but I don't really like to, especially right now with like what's going on with my mom and all that kind of stuff. I like to 
get notifications, but I have a really bad like squirrel brain, so I, I get distracted really easily. And that's not straight at all. No. Okay, that's gonna be good enough because I could be super nitpicky and I'm not going to be. So, let's see. We'll track three different types of income again. So I'm gonna leave three lines. I'm just gonna leave this open for now so I can like reference how I set it up before. I always, always, always forget my ruler. So I need to find one of those. Hopefully this isn't, I think this is my bowed one. Look at this. Can you guys see how it's like, I think my daughter was just messing with it. Um, and that messes me up. So I don't like it, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where anything is in this, this place. Okay, so I'm just gonna use that and we're gonna, we're gonna maybe draw some crooked lines again. Okay, and then we've got expenses, which I'm gonna put here. Oops. And I'm really like kind of just, um, I don't know, amped up, I guess you could say today because I took the day off work and I've got a lot to get done before my husband leaves for work. So I'm not like trying to rush and make this like a super messy, crazy video, but at the same time, I'm short on time, so I feel some pressure right now. Okay, so I'm gonna open every dollar on my phone. I can't really show it to you guys because there are some numbers in here I don't want to share. But I'm going to do some adding over here real quick. So 283.85 is what I'm expecting to come in from my business. And then and then I'll add this. Oops. Okay. Oh, I could have just looked. Okay. Jeez, Louise. Same number as the first half of the month stuff. My goodness. Okay, so variable and miscellaneous get my crazy looking ruler and see if I can make this work. Okay, so 2621 is what we're expecting for Maine and then my variable income should be coming in during the latter half of the month and um, nothing for miscellaneous. I don't know if I'm going to get to my D stash this month. It's a lot of work to do the D stash to be honest. <laughs> so I just, yeah, I don't know if it's going to happen, but it will happen eventually. Okay. So that's the total amount of income that we're expecting to come in. And then as far as expenses are concerned, we'll do this. Okay. So for grocery, actually let's put the bills first. So we've got banner, we have T-Mobile. Some of these I was able to get the specific bill amounts, which is nice. APS, Weight Watchers, Hulu Live. And then we get into grocery and eating out, which I did not take out cash for. I explained this in my video yesterday, but we're going to start tracking that electronically. And I explained why in that video. So um, long story short, it's just too complicated 
paying for eating out with cash right now because of like coin shortages and people not wanting to touch money and just that kind of stuff. Okay, and then we have unbudgeted. And then I can put in my total strip. And we will try to draw some lines again. Okay. So the budget for banner is twenty two twenty two. T Mobile was 148, 11, 250 for APS, because I have no idea what to expect. <laughs> um, at the old house, we were on like a budget plan where it was the same every month, but in an apartment, I, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna be paying. Um, Weight Watchers, 20, 95, and Hulu, 70, 24. We're gonna budget, you know what, I'll probably, no, yeah, I'll just put 350, 350. And eating out, 60. Pocket money is 80, which is $40 each for my husband and I, and then we budget zero for unbudgeted. So, the total there, I can just look it up on every dollar, is 1,000. Six dollars and twenty-eight cents. And then we will where did my Mommy? Huh? I won first place. You want to, oh for your for your race car game? High five girl. Good job. I want to come see you play in a second. Okay. Well, Dad said we could only play one game. Okay, well maybe me and you could play later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mommy's filming a video, okay? Okay. I love you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, so then what we're going to put our total potential savings. <laughs> Husband's teaching my oldest how to play video games. <laughs> they just got this Sonic, like, racing game. It's pretty cute. Okay. So let's see, let's figure out some math here. So if we subtract our total expenses, it's gonna be 18, 98, 57. I was actually in last place. You were in last place? So you were the best loser. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So I'm curious. We were projecting for savings um, 1101.49. One thing I did forget to mark is that we're probably going to fund our sinking funds from here. So I'm just going to put a little note down here that part of the savings is going to go to sinking funds. And that's something that maybe I could include up here in the future, but I just forgot it and don't feel like redoing it. So our total going to sinking funds, I think, was 770. Yeah, 770. So we'll just make a little note down there. And then, as far as our cash is concerned, I have our cash right here. So I'm going to be taking out 40 for myself, and then, or no. Part of this is for, oh shoot, okay. Yeah, I think I only get 25 because I spent 30, well I spent $33. Oh, see, this is where I get myself into trouble. I should have waited to order the books. I spent $20 at Dunkin' and $33 at Amazon for books. So that's 53. 
So I technically should only be getting $27. So I'm gonna have to do something about that. I'll probably just end up depositing, I'm just gonna deposit this back. I'm gonna take the dollar out of eating out and I will probably just deposit that back into the bank. And then I know my husband, he um, also bought some extra stuff and he's only getting 30. So that's for my husband, 20, 25, 30, and then I get 21. It should be, tw oh wait, there's another dollar. I get 22, <laughs> $22. So I'm short five bucks, but that's fine. I will just put that into savings, so. Um, so there's my pocket money right here. And actually I could probably, I could probably just, I'm gonna take this eating out divider out because we're not gonna be using that. And I could probably just uh, reorganize my wallet a little bit because I don't really feel like I need dividers. We just don't have enough cash categories for that at the moment. So yeah, so that's for my husband. Cash is good to go. Cash is very simple now considering we only have one category. And that is pretty much it for our second bi-weekly budget for the month of August. So I hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. Again, tomorrow you guys will see the results video from our first half of the month. Kind of see how we, you know, ended up and everything. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll chat with y'all later. Bye.